What's up, guys? Jordan McAbee here, owner-operator of FantasyRacingOnline.com, home of the Slingshot Fantasy Auto Contest. And today, we're going to talk about Phoenix, Instacart 500. All right, race number five rolls on. We're in Phoenix for one more West Coast race. <clears throat> Got the starting lineup uh, for Sunday's race in the desert. Got Keselowski on the pole. Keselowski on the pole. Sorry, I, I always mispronounce that. Kyle Larson starting second, last week's winner. Uh, Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Truex, JGR right there, all starting top five. Got Chase Elliott starting sixth. Kyle Busch, Blaney, Logano, and Byron rounding out the top ten. A few notables starting uh, further back in the field. Kevin Harvick starting 18th. Got Matt DiBenedetto, Alex Bowman starting 20th and 21st. Uh, you know, Chase Briscoe, 26th. Bubba Wallace back in 25th after his early race issues last week. And then Eric Almarola starting back in 32nd. Now let's go. So, so Phoenix is a flat track. It's one mile in length. Uh, it's been through quite a bit of changes here. Um, not really recently, but, uh, Over the last 10 years, so it went through a repave and a reconfiguration in like 2011, I think. And then they reconfigured it again um, a couple years ago where they moved the start-finish line to basically what was the exit of turn one. So now the start-finish line is there. Uh, same track, just move the start-finish line. Overall, uh, flat tracks. So for me, when I'm looking at flat tracks, I'm looking at Phoenix specifically. I'm not only looking at Phoenix data, but I'm pulling in uh, Richmond data. That track compares really well to Phoenix, even though it's a little bit shorter. I think it's a three-quarter mile. Uh, both flat tracks, though. And then we also have New Hampshire, which is a uh, half mile. Or no, that's a full mile. Yep, full mile. But it's really not shaped like Phoenix is or, or Richmond. So less of a comparison there between those. And then the last flat track is uh, Martinsville, which is only a half mile and uh, doesn't compare extremely well. But you got you kind of have to throw it in. You know, if you're, if you're comparing all the flat tracks, you could also throw in uh, like Indianapolis and, and Pocono. Technically, those two are considered flat tracks, but they're so big. Uh, and engines matter a lot more there than they do here. Like, I really don't don't throw in Pocono and Indianapolis when I'm looking at comparative data for uh, Phoenix. I'm basically when I'm doing my research, I'm focusing on Phoenix specifically and Richmond, um, and then also throwing in you know New Hampshire and and Martinsville. Which between those four tracks, there were six races to look at last year, and as you can see here on the screen. Very clear who was the best here. <laughs> Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, Chase Elliott. Like, up front every single time. Average finish, Logano average finish of 3.0 over those six races. Uh, Keselowski average finish of 3.7. Larson finished fourth here at Phoenix last year. And then Chase Elliott al average finish of 4.7. Just unbelievably, those, la those guys last year were the class of the field on flat tracks every single time. Uh, Penske, and then a lot of Hendrick, especially Chase Elliott. You even see right up there, DiBenedetto, average finish of 10.2. Uh, kind of a surprise, but again, it's, it's basically a Penske car that he's running. Um, switching over to uh, Phoenix specifically, pulled the last two years of data here for, um, for Phoenix, and... That includes all the races under the current package. So average finish-wise, you've got Kyle Busch with the best average finish of 4.3. with Kyle Larson with an average finish of 4.7. Logano, Harvick, Hamlin, Kurt Busch, all really solid. And then we'll take a look at Richmond here quick. Um, so we only ran there once last year, twice in 2019. Martin Truex Jr., average finish 1.3, just... You know, ridiculously good at Richmond. Then you got Keselowski, Keselowski as well, uh, Kyle Busch, Joey Logano. You know, we see the same guys pretty much up front 
with a lot of these flat tracks. It, that's just how it happens. There's going to be some surprises like there are at any track, basically. But for the true contenders, we basically know who they are. So that helps, obviously, with fantasy NASCAR and who to pick because we know who's going to be up there. And then it's just kind of, for, for something like the slingshot contest, uh, it's kind of filling in the gaps with, you know, the best either mid-range guys or, or a lower guy um, as well. Let's go back and look at, uh, before we get into, uh, let's look at, uh, so two races at Phoenix last year, um, Chase Elliott could have won them both. Chase Elliott did win, obviously, the fall one where he won the championship. Uh, green flag speed. So this is this is the first race of 2020 here at uh, Phoenix. Green flag speed, we got Kevin Harvick with the best green flag speed, Chase Elliott, Keselowski, Logano, and Kyle Busch, all pretty much who we expected. The, the weird thing about Keselowski, and we'll get to him, we'll, we'll look at this a little bit further, uh, is he doesn't always get the finishes here at Phoenix for whatever reason. It it really doesn't make sense, but it happens every time. So let's go look at his last. So this is this is Keselowski's um, finishes and record here at Phoenix. Look at three top fives in the last ten races. He is a much better flat track racer than that. He's won the last two stage twos here. He led 82 laps in this spring race last year. Like, for some reason, that team just, like, I know there's been a, a quite a few times that they gamble, you know, like on pit strategy or try to do something like that, and that hurts them. But it's just really weird, like, because he's so strong. Like, he probably had the strongest car here last fall. He's on the pole this weekend. He should have a race-winning car. Um but for some reason, he just doesn't always get the finishes here, which is like frustrating, obviously, from a fantasy perspective. Going back to average running position in that first race last year, Harvick, average running position of 2.6. Like Kevin Harvick is so good here. Uh, and we'll get into him a little bit later when we talk building lineups. But Kevin Harvick's record here, I know the big the talk, and I'm going to talk about it all week, is what the hell is wrong with Stuart Haas racing? Why? Like it's now they, they were really, they were bad at Homestead. They didn't, they got it figured out throughout the race kind of, but then they were really bad at Vegas. Like is it? And now, so, so we're hitting Phoenix this week and then Atlanta next week, arguably Kevin Harvick's two best tracks. I'm not, totally concerned about Harvick um maybe from like a dominator pr perspective I'm concerned this weekend but from a finish perspective I'm not too concerned with him and in, in fantasy NASCAR but if they come out and they struggle here at Phoenix and Atlanta that's going to be a complete red flag that's going to be you know we are avoiding Stuart Haas until further notice but we need to get through these next two weeks before we can really make that designation. So look at his record here at Phoenix, just ridiculous, especially he went through that phase where he won every single time we can, and didn't just win, but dominated, you know, there from 2013 to 2016 finished first or second in uh, six straight races over the last 15 races here at Phoenix. Harvick has never finished worse than ninth and just, I mean, you can see this top five contender every single time we come here. Um, now let's look at the fall race. Keselowski actually had the best green flag speed in the championship race last year. His pit crew just did not do him any favors, you know, in in trying to win that championship. Chase Elliott, of course, had a great car, came from the rear of the field in that race, ended up dominating most of it. Joey Logano uh, dominated the first person of that race because he then, uh, due to, it was, he was on the front row. I forget if he started second or third, but basically what it came down to at the beginning after after Elliott's, uh, where he had to go to the rear of the field due to inspection issues, it came down to who was going to lead the first section of it until Elliott got up there, uh, and it was Logano that did it. And then Denny Hamlin coming in fourth. The four playoff. So as far as I'm concerned, with this playoff race last fall, Honestly, you can probably, I don't want to throw away the data, but 
it was so apparent that nobody gave a shit in that race except for the four guys running for the championship. Like it was, it's it's awful. Or it was bad enough at Homestead throughout the years, you know. But at least guys were trying to be competitive for the first part of it. This Phoenix race, nobody cared. Like everybody, every single person in the field. I swear it was the same running order that entire day. That the entire day. It was just I thought it was an awful race and nobody there was zero percent chance that a playoff driver was not gonna or uh the one in the championship four wasn't gonna win that race. It was just I I thought it was embarrassing for NASCAR. Uh best average running position in that season finale last year, Logano, because of his early uh dominance, Hamlin up there and then Chase Elliott, of course, Keselowski Keselowski. I, that's going to be a problem for me. That's stuck in my head. That extra E in there. It doesn't make sense that it's Keselowski. Uh, but yeah. So uh, just a uh, little bit more on flat tracks. You know, last year, as I said, it's pretty clear who's great on these tracks. Average running position, uh, Logano, 3.9. Elliott, Keselowski, Truex. You get the point. It's it's not rocket science. One guy to keep an eye on, like, one guy that doesn't make sense is Alex Bowman, I'd say, which we're not talking about last week with Alex Bowman. <laughs> that was so painful at the end of the race. Oh, that, that, that sucked. But uh, so we all remember, and maybe you do, maybe you don't, his, the time that he dominated here at Phoenix – he grabbed, he got the first time he was in this. I don't know if it was the first time, but one of the first times he was in this 88 car for Hendrick started on the pole, led 194 laps. Hasn't done anything since best finish of 13th. And he, it's not like he hasn't started. Well, they just like this obviously isn't a good trend, but I think it could make him a, like almost an off sequence pick that people aren't really going to look at this week. Because, you know, his record here isn't obviously isn't great. Like this, this isn't inspiring uh, to me by any sense to to go heavy on Bowman like I like I did last week. Uh, speaking of, well, let's look at my algorithm predicted finishing order. So it actually has uh, Kyle Larson predicted to win this race. Super close right here though with all four of the guys that it's gonna it says is gonna contend. Larson, Keselowski, Elliott, Logano, all within, look at this number, just super close. So I like for me, it's it's if this is correct, it's gonna come down to um who gets the track position in the best spot and you know can lead there and and take the lead. Uh dominator wise, you gotta think it's gonna come down to Keselowski or Larson starting on the front row. They're both going to have great cars. Elliott could get up there as long as his pit crew doesn't screw up his car again. I don't know what the hell they were doing at Las Vegas, you know, fixing that damage that clearly had no, was not negatively affecting the car, just ruining his race day. But uh, yeah, so fifth, it, it has Kyle Busch projected fifth, Truex sixth, Hamlin seventh. Those three are all super close as well. You could, you know, you could interchange those. Harvick predicted eighth, which is a bit a bit surprising. Kind of, I mean, it's this algorithm is obviously taking into account that the the speed with Stuart Haas isn't there right now. Um, but I will say that 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 was a bit of a surprising uh, ranking in this when I ran the algorithm. Um, I figured Harvick would be higher just because his stats on flat tracks are so good. Uh, Blaney could be a top five contender. Um, one thing that hurts him with this, and I, and I wrote it in the article for the algorithm, is he's really not that great at uh, Richmond, which is a highly comparative track. So that's going to hurt him a little bit. Kurt Busch, William Byron. It's actually projecting Alex Bowman to finish 12th, a little bit higher than I expected. And then uh, De Benedetto, of course. We'll get into... We'll get into... Uh, couple of those other guys here soon though let's go let's make some lineups for uh, a slingshot fantasy auto contest this week 
So I'm really liking um, going the route of two high price guys, two mid price guys, and then maybe you know maybe dipping down to the lower price guys, but kind of staying in the not super low but low range, if that makes sense. Kind of this under eight thousand. So two two mid tier guys that I really like this week are Matt De Benedetto and Tyler Reddick. So De Benedetto. We'll look at his stats here at Phoenix. One, he's in a Penske car. Penske's really good at flat tracks. De Benedetto last year, in that he's he's not in a Penske car. He's technically in a Penske car, whatever. But last three races here at Phoenix, eighth, thirteenth, thirteenth. Um, the two races last year with the Wood Brothers, thirteenth and eighth. Obviously, we go and we look at the flat track stats last year. De Benedetto had. Sixth best average finish at 10.2. Like, that's just, that's strong. So he's starting 20th. He gives you place differential potential. He gives you top 10 potential for less than 10000 in salary. I'll take that any week. Tyler Reddick. Uh, so, it might, you know, if you're just looking at um, Phoenix stats, you're going to be like, why the hell are you even talking about Tyler Reddick? You know, average finish of 26 last year. Clearly not great. He was really, really good, like surprisingly good in this first race last year at Phoenix. Uh, As you can see here, he finished ninth in the first stage, fourth in the second stage, and then had, I I forget if he wrecked or or what happened and ended up finishing 33rd, but he had like, he legitimately had a top five car. In the fall, honestly, I think they just gave up and just didn't care about that race. But you go and you look at, let's look at the rest of Reddick's season here last year on the uh on the flat tracks so disappointment at phoenix go to go to martinsville which he was a rookie last year remember that finished 16th at martinsville 10th at new hampshire uh 11th at richmond and then again struggled at struggled that they struggled toward the end of the year and they're struggling at the beginning of this year so you could make a case for for not picking tyler reddick he uh he obviously finished second at Homestead, but these results aren't all inspiring by any means. 27th, 28th, and 22nd in the other three races this year. But I think the upside with Reddick, especially with him starting 23rd, you know, if he can get up there and grab a top 10 or even a top 12, that's going to be a solid points day for him in the slingshot contest. Now, you'll notice I didn't talk about Eric Amarola. Eric Amarola has a great uh, record here at Phoenix for what it's worth. Um, 13th, 8th, he had a bad race there last fall, or 2019 fall with at 22nd. Before that, though, 4th, 4th, 7th, and those are his results with Stuart Haas. When he was with Richard Petty Motorsports, he did have a top 10 here in 2017, another one in 2015. He's pretty solid at this race track. And you could make a case, obviously you can make a case for picking Eric Amarola right here. Uh, starting 32nd. If he if he performs like he has in the past, he's obviously going to probably be one of, if not the highest scoring drivers in this game on Sunday. That's just a ton of place differential points. You get two points plus or minus per position. Amarola could give you a huge day, but do you trust him once again? Like Stuart Haas is it's 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 how much you trust Stuart Haas. How much do you think it's a problem that they don't have the speed to start out this year at all? Like Almirola, yes, he's had bad luck this year, and that's why he's starting thirty second this week. But more than bad, even without the bad luck, he would be starting probably in the you know mid to upper twenties. It's not like Almirola or any of the Stuart Haas cars are doing anything great this year. Harvick. I think had top five at um, Homestead, but a, tr- a track where driver talent comes more into play than the car. It's just it uh, that that pick itself comes down to whether you trust Stuart Haas. Um, for right now, though, I'm going to stick with Reddick and De Benedetto, and we can you know maybe maybe get Almarola in there a little bit later. So that leaves us thirty one thousand five hundred for the last three drivers. I don't hate one. I think Bubba Wallace is a solid low-dollar option this week for what it's worth. 
Um, the Joe Gibbs Racing Toyotas have have always had strength at um, Phoenix. It's they've always performed well here. He's obviously not directly in a Joe Gibbs car, but he basically is. I mean, we know that it's it's comparative. But look at this. His record here with the Richard Petty car, 15th, 19th, 10th in 2018. Never really had an awful race except for his first race here, which rookie, you know, first race. So if we throw on Bubba Wallace in this lineup, starting 25th, I like that. You know, he's not, he has the potential if he moves up, you know, five, if he finishes 20th, he's going to get you positive 10 place differential points. I think that's a good value. Um, if you don't trust Bubba, Daniel Suarez obviously is a is a good value starting twenty seventh. Has the same potential. I'm still a potentially a Corey LaJoy guy. That car keeps breaking, but I, starting thirty third, he should be able to move up to the to the twenty seventh or you know a little bit higher. Um, so that's going to get you those place differential points if he can finish that race. Starting 33rd, only 6,000 fitting him into a lineup allows you to grab the top guys. So just for an example here, we so we got DeBenedetto Reddick. If we throw on LaJoy, it leaves us uh, 25,500 for the last two guys. We could grab Harvick. It leaves us 13,000. So we could then, you know, pick up Truex and instead of Reddick, go Amarola. Truex... Harvick, Truex, Almirola, De Benedetto, LaJoy. Or if you didn't want to go Truex, you know, you could go Harvick, Elliott, Almirola, Reddick, LaJoy. Or Harvick, Elliott, De Benedetto, Reddick, um, LaJoy. If you didn't want, if you didn't want um, LaJoy on there, you could you could hit Alfredo with this lineup. Uh if you wanted to dip down, if you don't trust, you know, like Harvick, or if you don't want Elliott, let's go. It's just so hard to pass up Kevin Harvick starting 18th at Phoenix. I don't think he's going to be the highest scoring driver in this race in slingshot, but he has a chance to be. But if you come up and grab Logano, and so you got 76,000 left, throw in Bubba Wallace. Harvick, Logano, De Benedetto, Reddick, Bubba Wallace. You have an extra hundred if you uh, you can come down and grab Chase. Obviously, going to be a contender in this race. I so as far as like Kez, Keselowski and Larson, I really don't like picking guys starting up front in the slingshot contest. Great fantasy options overall in this contest, though. It's just not part of my strategy of playing relatively safe and trying to go for max points. Yeah, they can. They're probably both gonna. They could easily both win a stage and finish second in the other one, you know, and get those stage points and and finish up front and have a good point scoring day. But if they do run into problems, I don't, I don't want to be in that position of losing that many points if if they run into problems. You know, you you compare to like Keselowski to Chase Elliott, five position difference. If if Keselowski drops back and if Elliott drops back. You know, and one finishes ninth and one finishes tenth. Those five positions of difference that where they start is negative ten points in the slingshot contest. So that's kind of why I, you know, unless I think that unless I'm like very confident that they that a driver starting on the front row is going to dominate the race, I typically stay away from them and and kind of go with guys like Logano or Kyle Busch or Chase Elliott that also legitimately have a chance to win this race but don't come with as much risk as going with a Keselowski or, or a Larson. Um, if you wanted to, you know, grab, if you trust Bowman, start out with Logano, hit Bowman. This leaves you... I'm not loving it as much as I thought I would. I was going to try to, you know, hit, um, try to get Almirola, De Benedetto, and Reddick all into one lineup, but I don't think that's going to be possible. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
Christopher Bell, I think, starts way too high to take a risk on uh, his record here. Obviously, he's in a different car this year and a, and a better car, but ran 24th and 17th in the Levine car last year. It's just not, that's not enough for me to take a risk on. Uh, if you didn't want to go Bubba, Chase Briscoe. Obviously, he's in the 14 car this year. Look at what Boyer was always a great flat track driver. You know, top 14 in seven of his last eight starts here at Phoenix. Top 10 in three of his last six. Top 11 in four of his last six. There's potential there, but again, how much do you trust Stuart Haas? I really don't. Now, if you, so what if we grabbed Suarez in this lineup with uh, pretty much, I mean, you can do whatever you want. When you have Suarez, Logano, Almirola, De Benedetto, if you want to go Chase, Kyle Busch, jump down to Bowman, Blaney, or Harvick, of course, what would it take? To get, you know, if you wanted Harvick and Chase Elliott into one lineup, you're, you're probably going to be forced to come down here and grab Anthony Alfredo. And then, yeah, Harvick, Chase, De Benedetto, Reddick, Alfredo, or LaJoy. Not my favorite lineup. I think Logano is a, is a great value play here at 11,400. Won this race last year. Has the place differential um, to score those points starting ninth. Uh, could win the race. Um, yeah. I, I really like targeting this area right here. Almirola, Reddick, or De Benedetto. I don't see being able to fit all three into one lineup and having a, a great lineup. It's a, it's a it's a safe lineup, but I think you have to pick two of those. Uh, one of the one of the lower dollar guys, you know, Chastain, Bubba, uh, Suarez, or LaJoy. Those are basically the four that I would I would uh, look at targeting, and then then it comes down to up top who you want. You know, do you want Harvick in that place differential potential, or do you want? I don't. I don't know if Harvick can win this race. That's my thing. Or do you grab Chase Elliott, who should be a contender, um, or really anyone? Again, we know who's strong on flat tracks. It's just finding the right combination now of uh, of picks. But yeah, Sunday Phoenix. Good luck. Got Atlanta next week, and then the dirt race at Bristol. I'm already not really looking forward to. That's going to be crazy. But, uh, yeah, good luck. See you next week.